All right, let's talk a little bit about my favorite topic. Woo! Anybody have any? Yeah. Anybody have all you want? No. Anybody want more? Yes. Cool. <laughs> so, what? The money gun? Oh. It jammed. Oh, I'm gone. <laughs> no, it's all right. Sorry. Wait, we might do more later. Okay. What do you think? Should we do more later? Yeah. I actually, the funny part was, I actually looked at it. I knew it was jammed when I did that. It was funny. All right. So, so, so here's what happens, right? So Colin said he wanted more money. How, Colin, how much more money did you want? As much as I can. As much as you can, right? Yeah. So here's the problem with as much as you can. You can never have as much as you can. It's impossible. You can have as much as you desire specifically. This is the same mistake everyone makes. I have people, you guys, so who, who's coaching me? Who left crying? Don't, don't answer that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> A lot of times I'm coaching with people, and you know, we start talking about money. We start saying, hey, how much money, money do you want? And they say, as much as I can, more, right? So most of the time, what I'll do, especially when they say more, which is the common answer, I'll take a penny out of my pocket, and I'll hand them a penny, and hey, look, you got everything you wanted. And it's the truth, because that's what they asked for. What you guys are doing is you got to be more specific in what you want. Who, was, it, was it just now Carl that said, do you have all the money you wanted, or was it, was it Chris that said it before? I can't remember. One of those guys said it. Do you have all the money for everything you need? I think it was Chris. Do you have any, all the money for everything you need? None of you guys raised your hand. I did. Now, you guys couldn't see me in the back. I raised my hand. And the funny part was I looked at, I think it was Gordon, I looked at Gordon and I go, if I want anything more, I'll just find more money. Isn't that totally different than what you've been thinking? I literally have everything I want currently, because if there was something else I wanted, I'd have the money for it. When you start to think that way, everything will change. You need to start imagining what you really want. Robert, what do you really want? Okay, so hand him a microphone. Behind you, right here. He's right here. He's right there. I'm sorry. I, I, I should have made that easier. I'm pointing, right? <laughs> what do you really want, Robert? One thing. Just one thing. One, one thing? One thing. What do you really want? Peace of mind. Yeah, see? That's just a cop-out. <laughs> right? That's just a cop-out. Uh, Roberto. What do you really... My microphone's coming. You can still hand him. You, you can still hand him one, even though he cop out. I want a net worth of... Uh, Million yeah, that's bullshit too. <laughs> I want a net worth of five million dollars. Why not ten? Why not twenty? Why not a hundred? What's the difference? Why not four point nine nine? I mean, come on, really? Yeah. Give him one ticket. <laughs> Who wants something that is specific? Janet in the back. It better be specific, or I'm gonna be really mad at you. I really want freedom to do whatever uh, I want. Uh, it's specific. <laughs> Uh, move to Florida. Do Pedro. I want to hear Please. what you have to say. John Baum. <laughs> I want a house on the water. I want a house on the water. What, where do you want this house in the water? Well, to start in Brick, New Jersey. In Brick, New Jersey. You, to start in Brick, New Jersey? Does the house, is it, is it a boat house? Does it move? <laughs> That's the first house. That's the first house? Okay, first house in the water. All right, look, look, it's better. Pedro, what do you want? Is working? Yes. A uh, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred acre ranch. Texas. Texas. Aye, 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 aye. He's another one. Twelve hundred. It can't be thirteen. It can't be thirteen hundred acres. It has to be twelve hundred acres. It can't be eleven hundred acres. No, the one I looked at was twelve hundred. The one you looked at. Yeah, it was twelve hundred. You want to know why this place exists? Sorry, Colin. Too late. You want to know why this place exists? Because Phil and I imagined this place about five or six, seven, maybe seven years ago. I can't remember what it was. We were sitting there. We were having a conversation. I created a really cool thing. It's the funniest thing. It was some kind of web website replication system. And I said, this will be great for investors. Meanwhile, Phil had this thing called the buyer briefcase. I don't know, you guys, some of you guys know about the story. He had this thing called the buyer briefcase. He was selling forms and contracts for real estate. And I said, let's put the two things together. After, after an hour, the two of us were like, oh, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome. 
and then we had our first fight. <laughs> Literally, our first fight. No, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing that either. No, I'm not doing that either. And we're like, well, maybe we can't be partners. <laughs> But we knew it. In the back of our head, we discussed it. We looked at it. We said we were going to have a classroom full of people, and we were going to do exactly this. We were going to help people. We were going to teach people real estate. We didn't even know about stock options yet. I, they watched him, he was watching me do stock options. I was watching him do real estate. We were doing real estate together. It was kind of cool. We didn't know what this place was going to be, but we talked about it. We imagined it. It started to come together. All of a sudden, look at this. We took this wall down three weeks ago. Yeah. Woohoo! We need a hotel now. Yep. I'm actually like, I'm excited and disappointed at the same time that I put all this money into this place and I got to move again. <laughs> I'll slow down. <laughs> right? You slow down, that's funny. No, you don't. <laughs> so what is it that you imagine? What is it that you imagine, right? I want, I want 1,200 acres. <laughs> I want more money. I want $5 million. <laughs> Stop it. Wait, you ready? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull somebody out because I know that I'm gonna get a better answer. Bring the microphone up here. Stop right that row, Mary. Tell me what you imagined 10, 15 years ago. What did you imagine? That I would be managing a lot of real estate. How many? How 20. many did you imagine? Uh, Ten to twenty. Ten to twenty pieces of real estate, right? Yeah. And we're not talking about like you know single family houses, right? Back then, yes. You were? Okay, great. How now, many, how, no. How, <laughs> wait, how, how many properties do you manage now? Four. Oh, okay, wait. How many? Okay, give me the peak. What? How, what was the peak of how many properties you managed? How, 20. 20. You hit the 20, right? Yes. Okay, now it's four? Yes. Aren't they multifamily? They're student housing. She's not telling you the whole thing. Yeah, I know. She's, like, she's holding back. I'm like, you know, no, come here, listen. No, there's four properties, but they're uh, student housing, and there's 900 people in four properties. That's what I wanted to say. Th thanks for helping me out there, Ramina. I really appreciate Sorry. it. Sorry. You know, I'm here starting to sweat going, damn it, I pulled the wrong person. Well, you asked me for the number of properties. 900. How many, pe how, many did you not, not the pr how many people did you want to manage when you thought it? Maybe I asked the wrong question. Ooh. When you uh, thought about it, how many people, how many properties did you want, did you want to have? Man, how many doors did you want to manage? How many people, it, you know what I mean? Initially, it was to be 20 properties. The right. properties changed from duplexes and single family homes right. to big. Beautiful. Towers Beautiful. of I got apartments. All right. <laughs> give her the microphone. Give her, give her, give her seven tickets. I already did. Seven I already tickets. Did. I already right. did. You already did? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> did I, Mary? <laughs> okay. All right, everybody, I want you to, everybody have a piece of paper? Yeah. Anybody have a check on them? Yeah. Uh, who has a check? Okay, I want you to go, go in your wallet right now and take out a check. If you don't have a check, too bad. By the way, there's a couple of things I always want. I always suggest you should you have. Always have a check in your wallet. You Mary's like, what? Why? Why? Because some guy up st on stage might say, hey, pull out a check. <laughs> what the hell? No, because if you're, if, you, if you're working on a deal, you might need to write a check to somebody. That's all. Just having, you know. I mean, there are times, I, I don't know, there are times I, 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 I carry like five, six, seven checks, and I run out of them. So I always carry a check. Okay, who's got one? All right, cool. All right. I want you to write yourself a check right now for any number you want to have that check cashable for 10 years from now. You told me five, I still have it. Five million? No, you told me five years. Five, that's why, whatever. Wait, you think I remember my exercises? I make this shit up on the fly. Larry, I forgot mine. Can you just make your check out to me? <laughs> <laughs> I make one out to you every week. <laughs> write yourself that check. Let's do it. Write it out. Write it out. How, uh, see, this, the, the slide says 20 years. I told you five. I said 10. The slide says 20. I told you. I make this stuff up as I go. 20 years, half of us are going to be dead. Forget it. Yeah, I know, I'm kidding. Okay. All right. Write it out. Put it in your wallet. It's really cool. Write it out. Sign it. Put it in your wallet. So what? Let me, I lost my wallet. I wrote myself a million dollar check. I gotta call the police. I gotta put a stop payment. I said, really? <laughs> I've had people say that to me. What if I lose my wallet? Who cares? <laughs> All right. So, do you allow money to flow into your life? Anybody allow money to flow into your life? Right? Do you know how you can allow money to flow into your life? Can I use you, Linda? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Somebody give Linda a microphone. All right. 
So he put I'll a microphone in front of his mouth. I'll stand close <laughs> to her. I will hug her. All right, there you go. There you go. Go, go. Right? What was... So I met Linda, and look, like, you know, it's, it's great. By the way, you know, just so you understand that, you know, we, we have a friend who says this, and I said, it's brilliant. She, she'll laugh at this. She, she says, brilliant. You can, marry, you can marry more net worth in five minutes than you can make your entire life. Anyway, so Linda, what was the first thing I told you to do when I met you? Pick up pennies. Pick up pennies. <laughs> now, now, now that I said that, I can't even ask the question, but how many of you saw a penny on the floor pick it up? A hundred percent of you. Every single person should pick up pennies if you see them on the floor. Is there anybody, first of all, do you know what the value of a penny is? Hey, do you know how much the value of a penny is? One cent, right? You want to know, know what that is? I, I swear, I, when you think this, Instantly, it's going to change. Do you know that, that one cent is one month's interest on $1,000 in a bank? <laughs> one cent is one month's interest on $1,000 in a bank. You put your money in a standard banking account, it's one cent per $1,000. Isn't that wild? That made it sound so, it makes it sound a lot more, right? right? It's a lot more, right? But the real thing that happens is your life changes. You actually have a, you actually start to, you start to letting money flow into your life. I'll tell you a funny story. It's a true story. I, you know, I, I started doing this, and I'm telling you, money just started, it was weird. Like, I got checks out of nowhere. This started happening. Something, and it was the weirdest thing. I can't, even, and one time I got, a, I got a letter from the government that said, we've been looking for you. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> we have money for you that an old employer couldn't find you, and they, you know, when, if you have an employee that disappears, it was actually, uh, I didn't like actually disappear, it was a commission or something, I don't know what the whole story was, fill out this form and we'll send you a check for 180 bucks. I fill out the form, a month later I got a check for 180 bucks. Mm -hmm. Then another check and another check, anyway, I started picking up pennies like all the time, right? Linda's almost gotten killed by cars trying to pick up pennies. <laughs> no joke, we're in Philadelphia one day and we're at a seminar and we're walking the street, and she's beside me, you know, and I'm like, where the hell did she go? And I see her on the ground, on the ground, no, like, the, like, like, I, I, like, like on the ground. And there's a freaking car flying around me, like, I grab her, let's go! <laughs> and she has a penny in her hand. <laughs> the best story, though, the train story, right? The best story, I, no joke, it was, was it last year, I guess? I don't know. It was like, was two it two years. years ago? Two years ago? Oh, yeah, whatever, because you can't do anything last year. So we're in, no, no, is that right? No, 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 I, I, I know, no, I'm talking about before, right before. So my birthday, we always go to New York, except, of course, for last year. We always go to New York, and we, we go, we have a beautiful dinner, we do all, whatever. So we're on the train, and we sit down on the train. You ever, you ever been in a subway in New York? Right? Okay. What are the floors like on the train? Right? You, you don't even want to look at them. Forget about touch them, right? So we're si we sit down, <laughs> we sit down on the bench. And we look down, and underneath the bench, across from us, is two pennies. Oh, no. And we're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so we, we make a plan. We're like, you know, we, we don't want to pick them up, you know, when we're on the train, while, while the train's moving. Everybody's going to go, ew. <laughs> so if you're going to make a plan, like the second the door's open, we're going to grab those pennies, we're going to go out the door, and nobody can say, ew. <laughs> so we make this plan, right? Train stops, door's open. She runs to get one, I run to get one, I bend down, and my pants split. <laughs> and I don't mean like split like that. I mean, whoop. I mean, from here to here. <laughs> Luckily, I've got a I've got a trench coat on and I'm covering it because it was the funny. She, she's like, I, I go. She goes, "What's the matter? Your back hurt?" I go, "No. <laughs> it just got cold in here." <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go to J.C. Penny to get pants. <laughs> All right, check this out. This is a guy I, 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 originally, I actually wanted to change the videos in these slides. I'm going to tell you, I did this presentation. We were probably open a month when I did this presentation. And I'm going through it, I'm like, I'm not going to change one bit of it. So I want to talk to you about this. Check this out. Larry, I got to thank you. Look, after our conversation, I never, ever, 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 walk past loose change on the ground ever again. And God is blessing me. Tell me how. How am I being blessed? Uh -huh. Oh, it's not stock related as yet. 
but I've got a lot of wholesale deals going, and I'm making some money on it. So I'm blessed. Amazing, isn't it? I'm telling you. So not long after this, about six months, a year, I don't even know what it is, where we actually started working for me. Remember, we, we, I used to have the host, a wholesale company in Philadelphia. He used to work for me. So it's been wild that he went from, like, you know, he, was, he had these problems. How many people were students? Right? You remember the, the intro presentation? Remember Bali? And Bali says, Larry says, pick up coins. If you let money come into your life, it'll, how does it go? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you Jamie knows it word for I word. I know it. I, I do know it. Right? Yeah. But you remember that? You guys, like, don't even, you guys, like, just, you know, you don't even he remember. He tells you, if you see uh, coins on the ground, pick it up. And if you're complaining about money, it won't come to it you. But if you just let yeah, it come, it, yeah. it will come. Yeah, and that's it. I'm telling you, I'll teach you this stuff, and you'll be surprised how simple things like picking up coins. And, it'll be, and it's funny, because, like, Linda goes on her run. She, you know, she, I, got, I got up to five miles. I'm typically running three miles. But Linda, Linda will go on her, run, her runs, and she'll come back. Look, I found 57 cents. <laughs> it's wild. It's really wild, right? And now we have, we have a... We have an urn about this big, full of dead presidents. <laughs> yeah, where are you? <laughs> All right, are you guys masters of your money, or are you a slave to money? How many people are in debt? And every month I gotta pay these damn bills. You're a slave. All right, even the Bible makes references to you being a slave in money. I don't remember what they are. I used to know them off the top of my head. I don't remember what they are. What is it? Be a slave to money because you'll always be a slave, but always uh, be your own person, something like that. Okay, that's why. Yeah, it's but you're, that's why. Okay, so don't be a slave to money, right? Yeah. So here's the deal, right? So this what's happening, right? You guys are becoming slaves to money. I master my money. I tell it what to do. Stop letting it tell you what to do. It's amazing when you start to think this way. When I tell you that anything I want, any, I don't care what it is, anything I want, I want a new car, I don't care. I'm looking at Mercedes, I'm looking at Tesla, I'm not sure what I want. I, I don't care. I'm looking at cars between one hundred and twenty and $160,000 right now. And the only reason I haven't bought one yet, honestly, is because they won't let me in the showroom without a damn mask. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is a guy, and again, I didn't change the slides. So this is funny, because this is... This was in the conference room, in this room, and this was before we even painted the conference room. That's how long ago this, this thing was made. I was just saying, uh, what's so great about this is uh, what was stopping me before from investing and making money was a fear of loss. And investing in the options 600 at a time, 1,000 at a time, is a great way to retrain your brain to accept that risk, and then you end up making money. Yeah, you know what he just said? It's wild, right? So, like, when I, I, who's new in options? Right? And when you watch your account go down a thousand bucks, you're like, oh my God! Right? Now I'm like, my account's down 150,000. Who cares? <laughs> well, don't think it didn't start with me being down a thousand bucks. I mean, we, and now I'm like, I don't care. I'll come back. I'm not even worried about it anymore. That's when it changes. Somebody had that on there. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody had, uh, we talked about this the other day. Somebody had it on their Facebook page. They said, if you're willing to lose $100,000, you'll probably make a million dollars. And I could clearly see that I understand that statement. It's so, it's so obvious. All right, let's talk about mentorships and mentors. You know what, Dan? Can somebody hand Dan a microphone? I, I, know, I know this is a good answer. I know this is a good person to ask this. And here's the question, Dan. Razan. How many mentors do you have? I right now have two mentors. You have two right now. Yes. How many mentors have you had in the last five years? Probably about seven yeah. different mentors. Right? And I'll always have a mentor. Right. Exactly. Exactly, right? So, so I decided that actually last year I decided that my most important goal was my health. You guys met my health mentor, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, how many, people have paid, how many people have paid 10 bucks for a gym membership a month? How many people have paid 30 bucks for a gym membership for a month? What's the most anybody in this room have paid for a gym membership a month? You paid 100. 150. How much? 150, right? I don't need that right now. Okay. But thank you. All right. Take two tickets away from him. All right. Let's talk about that, right? I'm going to tell you how much I pay Gordon a year to mentor me just in my health. Is it okay? Okay. $18,000. 
That's one of my mentors. One of them. Mm -hmm. One of them. Okay? I have other mentors that I pay a lot of money to to teach me to teach you. I have other mentors that teach me how to, how, how to make this better, how to make life better. I've met people like Brian Tracy. I've been in his house. Tony Horton. You guys know who Tony Horton is? I've trained, I've trained with Tony Horton before I met. Actually, that was how I got to Gordon. Not that Gordon knows Tony Horton, but when I trained with Tony Horton, I said, that's the kind of trainer I want. Now, Tony Horton was in California, so I couldn't train with him. So I found somebody that I thought was equivalent to Tony Horton, and I'm going to tell you right now, he is. Maybe even better, only because he's more approachable. Now, to, by the way, Tony's an awesome guy. Like, like the most humble guy you'll, you'll ever meet. It's just amazing. How many coaches do you have? Same thing, right? Coaches. You're gonna, you need to invest in coaches. You need to invest in mentors. I'm not, I'm, just so you understand, I just want you to understand, I'm not selling you to school. I don't care. Everybody who's a member of this school knows I don't care if you join or not. Mm. I care if you, if you uh, have a better life. So that's what we're here for. So don't think this is a sales pitch. This isn't. This is to, for you to go out and find coaches, find mentors, whether it's us, whether it's someone. I don't care. Whether it's Dan. Dan so, does some mentorship ship too. I don't care. Just yeah. go out and find mentors and coaches. And when they say that their price is $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, don't blink an eye. Just wonder how much, you're gonna, how much it's going to help you. How, how many years more would you like to live? Anybody want to put a number out? Like, your expected death, death, death today, whatever number that is. 60 years. How, 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 many more, uh, how many more years to that would you like to live? 36. 30 more years plus what your expected life expectancy is, right? How much is that worth to you? Yeah, apparently it's worth $300,000 to me, if you go by that math, right? So understand that. That's what you need to understand, right? You're lying in your deathbed and go, if I didn't buy that Mercedes, I could have hired Gordon. I'm not going to lie on my deathbed and say that. I'm going to lie on my deathbed going, Gordon, don't you dare drive my Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of the things I learned, and I thought this was really appropriate. You want to know why? I don't, but first of all, you, you know Phil and I, we don't need your money. You guys got that, right? We got plenty of money. In fact, sometimes I even sit here and I go, you know, if I didn't have the school, I'd probably make more money. Not that I don't make a lot of money. You know, don't feel sorry for me. Okay? Really, no. I, I told you I quit my job, six-figure income, and last year I did four times what I used to make on my job, you know, with all the things I do. So don't feel sorry for me. But this is what we learned, and it's absolutely true. When you give free information out, no one pays attention to it. The craziest thing, and again, every time we raised our prices in the school, what happened, Jamie? More people signed more up. More people signed up. Not less, more. You want to know why? Because the, they saw the value. And not only did they see the value, they show up. The last thing we wanted, and I keep going back to the school. I'm just using an example. Please understand, I'm not trying to impress you with the school. I'm trying to impress upon you the information that I'm giving you, which is when they paid for it, they showed up. I have a really good friend of mine who's been really, really good to the school. Like he really, you know, like he, I speak at a lot of his events. Um, some of you guys may even know him, Nick Tang. Yeah. Right. So Nick Tang, I speak at a lot of his events, and I never paid to speak there. I never pay him. He never, you know. And every time we go there, we get at least two students out of out of an event. So do you think that do you think that I'm grateful for him to him yes. for that? Absolutely. Right. I mean, not only that we're helping people. It's just great. And I have a good time speaking, as you could probably tell. And I get another chance to show off another jacket. <laughs> and then of course I get another tax write off. Right, Carl. He laughed, yeah. So Nick Tang came to me, he goes, listen, I want to buy your, your stock options program. I go, no, 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 I'm going to give it to you. You've been so good to me, let me give it to you. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 it's cool. Here, here, here's a free password, blah, 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 blah. You know how many times he logged on? Once. I actually did myself, my friend, a disservice by not charging him. And I, I'm actually, it's really funny, I'm actually upset about it. I'm upset that I, that I, that I, basically ruined it for him. I should have charged him. E maybe even a discount, but I should have charged him because he would have showed up. If they don't pay, they don't pay attention. That's just as simple as that. That's how the school was invented. Find good coaches. Pay for them. Hey, look, Gordon. Anthony. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we had a meeting today, Larry and I. Larry is very uh, experienced and knowledgeable about what he teaches and preaches. Um, 
just in the two hours we've been here, four hours total that I've sat with Larry, I've learned an immense amount, uh, way more than what I probably paid for. So I thank Larry very much and I look forward to working with him in the future and learning more about the business. If you need to learn, be educated, uh, you want to get involved in stocks or real estate, I suggest you contact Larry and sit down and have a conversation with him because he'll only benefit you, your family, and your future life. Before the school was officially open, I was I coaching. I second that. What? I said we all second that here. And here's the craziest thing. You want to know the crazy thing? He, he introduced me to Gordon. Isn't that awesome? Like, he was the one that introduced me. And he's doing really well now. Yeah, yeah. He's doing really well. Right. How many houses? He's like a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just crazy. He, he, he took off. Right? All right, cool. So this is a lot of you guys, <laughs> a lot of you guys coach at me, and I try to, you know, and you guys think that I'm going to go, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, Debbie knows. Debbie's like, Debbie's like my God. He's, he's borderline abusive. <laughs> I'm not borderline abusive. I'm flat out abusive. Stop being so nice. <laughs> <laughs> right? But how much have you learned? I have learned a lot. Yeah, exactly, right? Right? So if you want to be coddled, right? If you want to be coddled, God, you can take If you want to be coddled, call a therapist. If you want to be coached and mentored, call me. And there are times you're going to hate me. And there are times you're going to want to quit. But if you stick with me, I promise you, you're going to get what you want. And that's not. Five million dollars. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, look, successful people seek, seek counsel where f and, and uh, where failures listen to opinion. This is a good friend of ours, Greg Reed, who says this. And I thought this was brilliant, right? When you have something, when you, um, who's not a student? Who's not a student that wants to invest in real estate? Okay, cool, right, the, the, the Empress, right, right there, there you go, perfect, because I like this, right? Right, uh, well, that's your dad, though, right? Yeah, yeah so it's kind of probably not a good example, but uh, let's use it anyway, let's see. Well, you have, you have uh, any cousins or anything, or anything, right? Yeah. Have you told them about the fact that you want to invest in real estate? No. Okay, is there anybody, like a friend that you told you want to invest in real estate? No. No, okay, give, me, right, give, give, it, give it to Colin. Well, Although, the, but Colin's got Eric there, but yeah, give it to Colin, that's fine, because I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the right answer from Colin. All right, so you've had, because I, I know you, no matter what you do, you talk to people about it. Yes. All right, so b besides Eric, who else have you met, met, uh, mentioned the fact that you want to invest in real estate? A lot of people. And they said? No. Why? Because they don't listen. No, what, no, what did they say to you that was no? Like, you know, what was the reason they said no to you? Why did they think, why did they think that you should oh, invest in real estate? They, they don't know. Oh, they no, all right, never mind. He's, 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 he's going five steps ahead. How about David? He's not a student. You asked for a non-student. He's not there. You go. Okay, cool. Wait, we got David. Yeah, let's hold on. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so you want to invest in real estate, right? Yes. You tell your parents, your friend, your brother, your your sister. Wow, he's got a beard and mustache. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so weird. I'm the only one in here wearing a mask. <laughs> no. <it's laughs> go ahead, David. <laughs> what did they say? Look at me like I'm crazy. Of course, you are crazy, <laughs> right? Exactly. Why do you want to waste your money doing that? Yeah. Why the hell would you want to? You get these tenants, man. They got they the toilet's not gonna get jammed up, and they're gonna call you at two o'clock in the morning, everything, man. Why would anybody want to do that? Everything is negative. Right. Of course. Right. Yep. Where failures listen to opinion, right? So this is what I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a great exercise, and starting with this one, right? When you say, hey, I got this great idea, I want to open a school called Investor Schooling, and I'm going to teach people real estate investing and stock options training. And when everyone says, are you out of your mind? Which, by the way, every single one of them is going, wow, I'm impressed at what you did. I'm going to look at them and I go, and, and what do you do when they say, you want to invest in real estate, blah, 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 and they give you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it? I want to invest in real estate? You go... And they say, you should need a little. You look at them and go, how much real estate have you invested? Well, none. Good. Now I know I'm doing the right thing. Yep. Because you're a broke ass. <laughs> so I now know what to do to be broke. Yep. So I'm going to do the exact opposite. 
Right? Success leaves clues. Failure leaves clues too. Seek counsel, not opinion. Isn't this great? My wife's looking at me going, oh my God, I can't believe he actually wrote that. I got to tell you, I didn't make this up. Dave Corbin made this up. And when he, and by the way, when I heard Dave Corbin say this, who by the way, co co he's the coach for Greg Reed. Dave Corbin is the coach for Greg Reed. He, he and I, we're, 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 we coach from, from Greg Reed. Dave Corbin, when he said this, every, the second Dave Corbin said this, my reality changed. I was talking to you about this, John. My reality changed. Here's why my reality changed. Because I used to sit there and I used to insult you guys. And then Linda would come to me and go, you know, maybe you shouldn't have done that. And Phil would come to me and go, you know, maybe you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe, I, you know, maybe I should be nice and go, Andrew, it's okay if you come late to class. He knows what I'm talking about. He's never been late again. <laughs> right? Steph. It's okay if you trade outside the rules. You're still nice. <laughs> Don't worry about the money you just lost. It's okay. No, what do I do? I called you out in front of 25 people. I plus people online, yeah. What I say to you? Called me out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and guess what I found? I improved his life. I improved her life. I was right. They were all wrong. They ain't doing that. <laughs> They're not helping people, right? I could just imagine what a therapist would think of, what I, of the way I speak to people. In fact, no joke, I compete with therapists in the school. So any of you know who I'm talking about? Don't raise your hand. Like th my therapist said, I don't give a shit about what your therapist said. This is my point of view. Now, you do whatever you want, because I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> or get arrested, whatever. All right. A dream is just a dream until it, comes to and th until it comes true, and then it's a responsibility. Phil and I, three, oh, three years ago, almost to the date, we had our first class up here. And it's funny. If, if you, anybody see the video? Yes. We were able to capture I don't even know where it came from. We lost it. I was able to recover 30 seconds of it, which is the first 30 seconds of us literally starting here. And Phil's over here, I'm over here, no jackets, no nothing. As a matter of fact, I think I'm in a nice shirt, he's in a nice shirt. And, and I turned to Phil, and, or whatever, we had a whole conversation, a 30 second conversation about how we thought no one would show up. There was only like 10 people in the room, and we bought a case of beer, and we said, like, if nobody shows up, we'll just drink the case of beer. And, and the five minutes we opened, the five, 30 seconds we opened it, we actually said, hey, anybody want a beer? We got a whole bunch of it. That's how we started. Look at this. Look at this. This blows my mind. We got 100 people online. Hi, guys. We got 100 people online, and you guys are in this room <laughs> during a pandemic, if you believe there is one. Yeah, I know. I, never mind. Right? And you guys are all here, right? Now it's a responsibility. I'm responsible for every one of you guys. Students and non-students, I'm responsible for you guys. I actually believe I can help every single one of you, and I'm not going to stop until I help every single person I can possibly help, and then I'm going to die. No, well, eventually I'm going to die. Everybody dies. <laughs> right? What? I'm going to grab. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. See? I went to my therapist, and he said you should use the word graduate instead of die. Who the hell cares? You're not here anymore. <laughs> In case you forgot. This is what I live for. This is what I live for. I want to help every single person. I want to help all of you do what you want, right? Andrew. I love Andrew's story, man. It's, a, it's, a, it's such a cool story, right? Look at him. Just look at him, right? Look at, Andrew, look at, look at him with up. his knife. Just stand up for a second. Just stand up <laughs> for a second, right? Awesome. Stand up for a second. Now, stand up, right? He's sitting in the front seat. Stand, you don't even have to talk. You don't even need a microphone. Just look at him. Look at the jacket he's wearing, right? Look at his hair, right? You know when I met Andrew? You guys want to know? So some of you know, some of you don't. One day, the, the door rings again. And it's the damn Amazon driver again because Amazon comes every single day here. Look around. <laughs> right? And, and Andrew is the Amazon driver. And he comes in and he goes, I deliver a lot of packages here. What do you guys do here? What do you guys do here, right? 
I said, well, we teach people how to invest in real estate, how to invest in stock market and, and, and stock options. And he goes, how can I get involved? I said, show up here on Thursday night. I think five minutes later, I turned to Jamie, and she goes, what was that? I go, I don't know. He's not going to show up. And he didn't. Here I am. No, he didn't. <laughs> You oh, didn't, yeah. He, yeah. he didn't. I, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. He didn't show up. Because, yeah. He didn't show up, shit. and I said, see, I'm right. And Jamie called him and said, get your ass in here. He showed up. Not only did he show up, how much money did you just make? Twenty-five. $25,000 doing your first wholesale deal, right? Amazing, right? How long have you been in school? In the school? Uh, less than six months. I, I mean, I, I had no intention of making that a testimonial, but look. This is my life right now. I'm helping other people meet their visions, meet their, meet their life, change their life. We have one student who came to me and she wanted to invest in real estate. It turns out she really didn't want to invest in real estate. She really wanted to be an entrepreneur. She's about to open a laundromat. I've been coaching her through it for months now. It's amazing. And I can't wait till she opens it, right? You guys want to know what the best thing you can do for the rest of the world is? How many people in here are like, I want to do something really nice for the world. I want to change the world. Come on, raise your hand, because I'm raising my hand, because I feel the same way, right? Yeah. All right, right? Okay? I got bad news for you. You ain't changing the world. You're just not. But you could change one person's life at a time. If it's a 1,000 or a 100,000 or 1,000, 10, 100, 10, whatever, a million, you could do it. But just concentrate on one, it's good. But here's the other thing, right? The really weird part about this, right, is most people that you start to, you start to talk to them about, about changing the, the rest of the world or changing somebody else, and they say, well, I'm going to give them money. I'm going to give them something, and it's okay. Well, that's good. But if you have no money, you can't give them anything. You can't give the world anything, right? I can't give you guys this delicious lunch, and I can't give you guys, I mean, you, I mean this was a wonderful day, right? Most of you didn't pay for it. Most of you gave coupon codes for it. Right? You had an awesome time. I can't do that if I don't have the only thing that I can do to change the world, believe it or not, is make more money. Because if I make more money, I can give more money away. I can hire more people. I can spend more, pe more time doing the things that I want and making other people happy, not with the money. By the way, I don't even like to give money. Anybody give to charity? I hate giving to charity. No, no please understand. I hate giving to charity. Like, if I have to write a check to give to charity, I feel dirty. I like to go to a charity and go, what do you need? And then buy them what they need. The, our first date, right? Linda, our our second, oh, sorry, our second date, because our first date. Right? And so it was our second date, we were actually at a, 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 a charitable organization, right? And, you know, they were, like, passing the hat around. Not, you know, not really passing the I mean, it was a nice plate dinner, dinner or whatever, and they were asking for And I walked up to the, to the, to, to the director... I said, look, I, you know, I can write you a check, but what do you guys really need? And they go, well, we're trying to save up to get a uh, new, uh, it was a, it was like a visitation house with autism kids, and they have, they have homes where they put the kids in for the day, because, I, and some of these kids aren't kids anymore, some of these kids are adults, so the parents can at least have normalcy for some time during the day. I mean, it's a rough life. If anybody knows somebody with an autism kid or has an autism kid, it's a rough life. You know, it, 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 really rough. So this is a place called Visitation Home. She had, a, she had an autistic kid, and she, they, they created this. And I said, okay, what do you guys need? She goes, we're saving up money to buy. We have the two of the homes, need two ovens and two microwaves. I said, on Monday, they will be delivered and installed. And she goes, what do you mean? She go, I go, I'm calling Best Buy, and I'm going to have them ordered and delivered and installed on Monday. She was blown away by that. But the fact is, now it was done. It's finished. It didn't matter how much it cost. I could have wrote a check for 200 bucks, or I could have done that. That was much better to me. I, I, that's just me. If you guys want to do it another way, it doesn't matter. Do what you need to do. Do what you feel best. I just felt that that was the best thing for me to do, was to help her with that. Look, I'm going to tell you now, positive energy goes forward. So, <laughs> you guys think I'm a positive guy? Oh, yeah. I, I am, right? Yeah. I have my moments. <laughs> right, Deb? Like when I throw printers? Anybody ever see the movie uh, Office Space? Right, I had my Office Space moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had my Office Space moment the other day. Yeah, never mind. You guys had to see it. It would have been fun. I actually wish it was on film because it was actually kind of funny. I don't care. I own the place. She held up the sign and said five minutes. <laughs> 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 
Whatever you want, you can have. Anybody know the day the world was created? I do. I know the exact day the world was created. What was the exact day the world was created? What day? The day you were born. I want you all to think that. The world was created the day you were born. <laughs> what? What did he say? That's 100 tickets. Yeah, it's an, whatever she has. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> now you can put up four minutes. Right, right. The, all right, stop. I, mean, I'm, I, I got four minutes. Let me finish my presentation. I'm not even done. I'm not even halfway through it yet. I'm actually not. <laughs> the world was created the day you were born. Now, you guys ever hear the expression, the world revolves around him? Yeah, the world revolves around him. He thinks the world revolves around him. I guarantee you the world revolves around you. You guys want proof? Stand up. All right, turn around like this. <laughs> Did the world just revolve around you? Yes. So next time somebody says it, so yeah, I know. <laughs> Sit down. Now I'm going to give you two pieces of information. I'm going to repeat them. Number one, the world revolves around you. Number two, the world was created the day you were born. How many walls just fell down? Everything in your entire life is you, only you. Don't tell me that, oh, you know, you, blah, 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 F bullshit. <laughs> okay? Everything about you is created by you, and you're only combined by the walls that you create yourself. You need to stay away from your limiting beliefs. I'm not going to get into this because I, I kind of I went off on a tangent, and I got a whole bunch of slides, but I want to get to something important here. But I'm going to go through these really quick. I'm going to read them. You guys interpret them any way you want. What are your limiting beliefs? Risk winning. Only you can change your life. No one can do it for you. Only you. I can't do it. Create a life your future self will be proud of. Counterfactual simulation. This is great, right? See it, then reverse engineer it. Did I tell you that we did that already? Absolutely. Anytime you want to see something, we saw this. Phil and I saw this in our minds. And then we created it backwards. And, it, and now it's actually expanding past our creation. All right, I'm going to get by. Mistakes are proof you are trying. Excuses don't get results. Stop making them. Yes, you can. Right, write down any one of these or, or, or anything you think that's relevant. If it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. How many times have I said that to you guys, right? You take you out of your comfort zone. What are you willing to give up for your dreams? Life is a team sport. <coughs> Who's on your team? Get the wrong people on your team? You can't win, right? Who's the greatest quarterback there is? Anybody want to throw one out? Well, fine, whatever. <laughs> Who's the worst team? Oh, I was going to say put Tom Brady in the worst team, but yeah, yeah, never mind. Sometimes you have to cut out the cancer, right? Some, someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. This is one of the greatest ones, right? Stop it. Stop it. My life really sucks because, because my mommy told me I was a bad boy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Worry about your own opinion. Prove. You were bad. What? <laughs> Did you finally get back up here? <laughs> I know. You, I know you probably were, right? <laughs> Prove them wrong. I love it, right? When the guy says, "You can't do that." <laughs> no, you can't do that. I can. Only do business with smart people. Leave us out of it. <laughs> Surround yourself with people you have respect for, not people you have influence over. This is great. Okay? This is great. Right? You think I have respect for Carl Fisher? <laughs> yeah. Damn rocket scientist teaching you how to save money or taxes. That's somebody to listen to. Right? Dan back there? Absolutely. Phil? Absolutely. Right? Jamie? All these people. I have respect for them. Right? The reason I have respect for them is because they are good people. Well, Just not Paul, are, not Paul. Paul's all right, you know. <laughs> it's really easy to hang around people you have influence over. You will never grow. 
you'll never grow. I love this. I'm going to get over here. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> we were in a meeting the other day. Yep. And I know I said you never allowed to say it again. Yep. But I want you to say it one more time. I that thought I was. I, uh, wait. Stupid. How, what, what, how did you say it? You remember what she said? I forget exactly. People would think I'm stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say it. Yeah. That you, people would think I'm, I'm stupid. So, no, that's not what you said. No, you said well, I feel stupid. I feel stupid. Right. So she made a mistake. No big deal. She made a mistake. We were talking about it. We called her out. I mean, it wasn't like... Then she said, I feel stupid. But she didn't say it like this. I, I'm sorry. I'm doing this, but I, I feel stupid. Right? And you know what, and, 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 and you know what I said? Stop it! It wasn't even that great. It was loud. It was probably the... And I get... Awesome. Sometimes it was I get, much louder. Sometimes I get really mad. In meeting, meetings at the staff, right? Yeah. I think I was the maddest at that moment because mm -hmm. I want her never. I didn't even. I don't even think she. I, she had trouble saying because I told her never say it again. <laughs> right? right? Stop it! Yep. Anything you have is a limiting belief or anything that you're putting yourself down. Cut it out! Yep. Well, it's just gonna hurt you. Why bother? Because I really like to abuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> really, All I right. do. Michael. It's yeah. fun. I want people to feel sorry for me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm making fun of you. I'm actually, I'm actually just enjoying my new character and Phil will love it too. Okay. All right. Cool. What's the best? All right, thanks. What's the best motivational story you ever heard? Three feet from the goal. Three feet. From really? Goal. That was pretty good. That's pretty good, right? If you don't know where this is from, it's uh, from Think and Grow Rich. <laughs> that was pretty good. I'm like, did you see my slides? Did 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 somebody whisper in your ear? <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100 percent of shots you don't take. Mm -hmm. Learning something new has three stages. I really want to go through this, so I'm going to take two minutes to go through it. But normally, I'd spend a little bit more, but check it out. Three stages. I want you to think about this, right? Think, and you're going to know really quick that I'm right. First one is, huh? Brent Kessler this morning. Buy whole life insurance and invest and, and, and use that to pay off your bills. What the hell is he talking about? Right? Isn't that the first your first thought? Damn it, I've been I went to my friend and he told me whole life insurance is a total ripoff, and I should only buy term and invest the difference. How did I know that somebody told you that? No, I mean they, believe me, I could have picked anybody. Right? Huh? What the hell is he talking about? Whole life insurance? The vehicle that do that crap is whole life insurance? What? Then you were like, hmm, that's interesting. I take the policy, I did it, huh. And then by the end, especially when Chris came up, you were like, ah. <laughs> this is learning. You can do it. All right. What have you been taught about money? Money is evil. No, it's not. Can it buy happiness? Yes, it can. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't go through this right now. I don't have time, but yes, it can. I can prove it to you over and over and over again that it can buy happiness, and I promise you that if you have none, you're miserable. <laughs> All right? Do families get torn apart by money? Yeah. You want to know why? Because nobody knows anything about money. Right? Should you discuss money with children? We should never have talk about money at dinner because I want to raise it's like my parents did. Yeah. <laughs> Stop listening to broke people. Read each line out word. You ready? We're going to do this together. You guys ready? I am amazing. I'm amazing. I can do anything I tell myself I can do. I can do anything I tell myself I can do. No one else controls my destiny. No one else controls my destiny. I can be a millionaire. I can be a millionaire. Come on, you guys are like boring. That's what I want you to say. I can be a millionaire. Yeah, you know, guys got louder. That was pretty good, right? I will make money. I will make money. Get over hey! here, Fred. Woo! This is a look, 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 look how good he looks, man. So you guys like it? I know Fred I look was. I always when I'm standing next to you. Right? 
Really? What is this? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no. I, Fred, Fred helped us help us build the school. You guys know Fred went off and do, doing his own thing. If you guys are following Fred, I'm a big fan. So you guys, like, just so you know, and I'm like so excited you came. That's, that's really cool. But I'm really, really here. I'm really glad you're here. Okay, cool. cool. I Sorry. deserve it, even if it's spelled wrong. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Microsoft spell checker at it again. But who cares? Let's do it together. I deserve it. I deserve it. All right. You will soon unlock the secret to immense wealth. No. You have unlocked it. <laughs>